So, as I said in my compiler video, I wanted to actually implement a game project in Cool. I know this is a really bad language, but I wanted to see how far we can get with it. Initially, I implemented the snake game, but I felt like that was way too easy. So I decided to torture myself and implement a multiplayer game from scratch. In this project, I learned a lot more about networking, trading and game development. I also started to appreciate more existing game engines, because it was really scuffed to do everything from scratch especially the UI and polishing parts of the game. That was really hard and it would have been much nicer if we had a game engine for it. The game is going to have a really simple objective. You are a square on the map and you have to collect coins. The player with the most coins at the end of the game wins. To make things a bit more spicy, you can also bump into other players and deal random damage to each player. The more coins you have, the better your chances of surviving a bump. Oh, and when you die, you just get disconnected. Womp womp. I'm just kidding, you just respawn at a random location. Well, now that you know how the game is going to work, let's see how I actually implemented it. So, the structure that I have in mind is something like this. We are gonna have a server that will run two threads initially. One is going to listen for new connections and the other one I haven't really used is the main thread. But afterwards, once we get a new connection, we have to create a new thread for each client. One thread for each player basically. Then we are gonna have the client which is going to display the UI that the players are gonna see and it's gonna run on two threads. One thread is gonna receive messages so that's gonna be blocking and the other thread is gonna handle the UI and the input. However we cannot really do anything fancy yet because we don't have threading and that means that we can only handle one client at a time and both the server and the client are gonna block on the call to read so pretty much nothing's gonna work and i guess so far what we have is a really simple server that listens for connections a really simple client that connects to this server and then we send one message back and forth between the client and the server so it's kind of an echo server so for the messages i wanted to implement a very simple system where we have a type which is gonna be just a single character and the payload this part was the most difficult of the networking because you have to implement and serialization and deserialization of the messages in cool which doesn't really have bytes so i try to simulate that by using strings however you have to keep in mind that serializing an integer is not really just a simple two string call but instead you have to take each byte of the int and convert each byte to a character so that's like literally considering the int as a string how you can do that in c for example when you can cast an int a char pointer so that's the same idea but uh, we have to use the same endianess because otherwise we can have issues so we have to decide on that but a bit later and um, why do we have to serialize the ints like that well because we want to have a constant size for our messages for example if you just call two string if you have the number five then it's gonna have a length of one but what if you have number 120 that's gonna have a length of three. But if you use their binary representation of the numbers, you are always gonna have eight bytes because we use uh, int 64. So yeah, that's why we need to use a serialization and not just convert everything to strings because we want to have a constant size of the messages. That's gonna make it much easier to deserialize. Then in uh, day two, I actually wanted to solve our issue with the blocking read calls and I started to work on implementing threading using pthread. The next thing was to get multiple clients working. So when a player connects, it's gonna send a player connected message and it's gonna sync the list of players on all clients. However, something didn't really work as I expected because we weren't able to receive all the messages. What actually happened was that we had a bug where the receive function would read the entire buffer that it's uh, sent and not just the current message. So that means that we need to buffer the buffer right and um, what happened was that if we send multiple messages in a single frame only the first one would be used so how i fixed this was to keep an uh, in-memory buffer and i read messages until the buffer was empty and only then i call to receive again and this ensures that each frame we handle all the messages that we receive from the server and not just the first one as we did before so at this point we can start the server and connect multiple clients to it and the cool part is that we can see all the other players in each client's window at this point i also noticed another bug and the ids of the players were looking kind of off 
and I mean they should be numbers between um, you know three four five because they are file descriptors but they were all huge and uh, I quickly realized that this was a serializing uh, then deserializing issue because we were serializing the numbers with big endian and deserializing with little endian now that we have better networking and multi-threading in place it's time to actually work on the server and for the input handling I decided to use an authoritative server that means that the server is the only one that decides the position of the player and the client just handles the input from the keyboard and sends that to the server then the server updates the position of the player and sends that to all the clients in other words it broadcasts the new position of the player this is a very simple way to handle multiplayer games like the movement but uh, I guess it should be enough for our purposes I have also updated the net code for the server side to use buffers and this is based on the same idea that we had in the clients so that the messages that we get in the same frame are all handled from a single client because yeah we want to be able to read all the messages that, that come from a client although so far we only send the keyboard message so it's only one but who knows maybe in the future we'll have more messages the next thing on the to-do list was adding an objective to our game and I decided to go with a very simple concept the player has to collect coins which are shown on the map as a yellow circle so far there is only one coin at a time and when the player collects it another one spawns in a random location and in fact we just move it around once the player collides with it and probably this will allow us to add some kind of damage mechanic later on and we'll see how that influences the gameplay of the players because uh, right now the objective is just collect coins but the players cannot interact uh, between each other so we might want uh, some kind of uh, like you know competitive interaction between the players maybe damaging each other or something like that so yeah we'll have to see how we can do that now uh, in day four i implemented the ui for the game and um, the ui right now is very basic it just shows the score and we will show the score of each player on top of the character so we just plop it on the character and at this point i realized that all the players have the same color so I thought well let's make the local player green or like the player that we control we make it green and all the other players we make them red so they look like enemies. I also did some minor fixes like wrapping the player position on the map so you can like circle around the map and uh, you know we don't allow the player to go out of bounds because you know it was like a really small issue I guess I don't know though if it's an issue related to network but when we were trying to send negative numbers like negative ints yeah i'm not sure i don't think it was working for some reason like the players were looking kind of scuffed so i decided to just go ahead and wrap uh, the players around the map and like we had two options either wrap the players ar around the map or not allow them to move any further and i thought it might be a bit more fun to let the players uh, you know go anywhere but wrap around the uh, the edges and yeah i guess now the game actually has an objective you have to collect as many coins as possible and i guess that i spend most of day four actually working on making the clients and the server disconnect gracefully it is not that interesting to talk about that to be fair but the main idea is that we detect when a client disconnects and we do that when we can no longer read from its socket so the read function returns an error basically and if we detect that we remove it from the list of players and broadcast a disconnect message to everyone else that way we will see the players disappear from all clients and when the server stops all the clients will no longer be able to read messages so the read function will return an error and that way they know that they can stop as well because the server stopped there's no point in running the game anymore it sounds really simple on paper but but it took me a while to get it working without any bugs in day five i decided to implement some uh, of the logic that i said like the collision between the players and uh, when you attack another player like you move on top of it the server will randomly choose a winner the loser will lose half of his coins and respawn at a random location and the winner will get only one coin and they'll continue where they left off and i guess this is more of a making the life of the other players harder rather than a strategy to win the game because you don't gain that much but you make the other players lose a lot right and i guess um, when i said that the server chooses the winner randomly it does it so based on the number of coins that you have so if you have more coins 
you have a better chance of survival basically regardless of the number of coins you always have like a really small chance to win because if you have zero coins then you instantly lose right but if you have zero coins you'll have a really small chance to still win so yeah you know if everyone has a low amount of coins they'll they'll have a almost equal chance basically i also have added some other elements of ui although most of the ui is just in the messages of the cli and that is because we don't really have particle systems or we don't have a sound system in place and you know doing that would really take a lot of time i guess i'm okay with having um, just the basic ui showing the score and also the last winner of uh, the round and the rest of the messages to be in the cli i guess when you take damage when you die the green turns red but um, when you deal damage to other player you don't really get those uh, would be really cool to have you know some particles and uh, dopamine inducing uh, you know sounds when you kill someone when or when you collect coins or something like that would be nice but uh, yeah i mean i'm okay with the cli version like just to get the game to a point where it's playable and yeah i guess uh, i said when the round ends that's uh, basically when a uh, when a player gets 25 coins and um, yeah i guess in a, if you run the server with a lot of players i think that might be a bit difficult because everyone will try to mess around with the like you'll see the guy that's in front and you'll try to go after him try to make him lose the coins so yeah i think that would be i guess it would be fun to see how uh, people would actually play the game though so yeah I'll, I'll try to see how i can do that and yeah i guess after the round ends the game just resets everyone at random position and everyone starts with zero coins yeah maybe you know just give the winner a coin or something i don't know uh, it's still uh, open to feedback i guess all in all we have actually managed to finish the implementation for this really simple game it actually has all the features that i imagine in the beginning maybe it misses some of the polish that you would expect from a game engine what you would get from using a game engine like unity or something else maybe even uh, godot but uh, i'm still happy with the results i guess using Relib for the graphics was a really good choice because it is very simple to use and it was really easy to port to cool so yeah basically porting Relib to cool was just writing the assembly which calls the methods from Relib, and then in our uh, library we just added the header definitions for the extern function or the functions that we considered extern imported from uh, Relib. i don't know if it's just me but i find and it really satisfying to do the networking with sockets it really teaches you a lot because you need both networking and multi-threading to make it work you need to know like the networking part to know how to uh, handle the sockets basically they are just files in uh, unix and then you need multi-threading because if you want to handle multiple clients you need to pawn a new thread for each client that you handle you need to coordinate all the threads to make them work together properly like if you use shared memory and stuff again for multi-threading and i guess yeah, i mean for networking it's not that much you might need um, to learn how to use you know binary data if you want to implement your no your own protocol if you don't want to use http or something like i did i had to do my own message protocol that had you know the type and then the payload but you can do much more stuff you can add size in the payload so that you know that you read the entire message and you don't have to wait for another read because if the message is split in half then you need to wait another read right but we don't do that we just read the entire message hope that it's uh, full and uh, go with it but I mean, you know, if you want to do it properly, you can do it properly. But I think there are an, a lot of libraries if you use a real game engine. But uh, I think this was really good for, for uh, like five days. It was pretty nice. And yeah, I am pretty happy with the results and I'm looking forward for the next project.